Hi viewers, this is SkyFi Audio coming at you from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Uh, visit us at skyfiaudio.com and please uh, hit like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Today we've got something pretty cool. It's not a you know super high quality CD player, but it's uh, probably the most the most historic one. This is a Sony CDP 101, the first commercially available CD player to come out in 1982 so long long time ago um, this unit cost about seven or eight hundred dollars in 1982 which is quite a bit um, the CD format was brand new and um, this was the first CD player to utilize a horizontally mounted CD tray um, the equivalent to this which would have been a Philips uh, CD player uh, it was more of a top loader where you could see the label on there. So the Philips kind of went the route of the record player where you would almost load it in the same fashion while Sony uh, utilized the drawer, which was pretty unique at the time. So CDP-101, uh, the name is pretty interesting. 101 is the binary equivalent of the number five and the designer that coined the 101 felt this was a sort of mid-level from a one to 10, which would have been a, a number five in the, in the ranking. Um, so even though it was an expensive CD player, that was really because of, of the technology was brand new, not because it was really well built. However, there's some really neat things about it that are worth sharing, and I'll go through some of those features. Uh, you see it here sitting in our workbench. Uh, we've got it connected up. And the first thing that I noticed is how high the volume is. It's got a pretty hot volume. Uh, you know, with my reference uh, preamp at almost uh, two or three in the dial, this thing's already way too hot. So um, unusually, they, they set a pretty high output voltage for this unit. Uh, the other thing that's neat is I opened it up to service it and uh, because it's an early design, right away you notice that they used uh, three motors, actually four motors in the drawer itself. Um, so they really hadn't figured out how to economize it yet. So there is one motor that opens and closes the drawer, which is what you hear here, pretty loud. It's a rack, it's a rack and pinion uh, motor. Uh, that you hear the push button is on the drawer which is kind of neat i always like that about um, early sony cd players so one motor would have um, um, articulated the drawer in and out a second motor would control the clamping mechanism that clamps and closes on the disc a third motor moves the laser assembly forward and back on the disc itself and then the fourth motor would uh, spin the disc um, you know, in later CD players, as they try to economize, they were able to combine and reduce it down to two or three motors, which is pretty neat. But no, this is an early one, so four motors indeed. The other th neat thing about it is it's how satisfying it is to use it. The, um, there's some sort of clicking that happens when you press any button on here. The buttons are uh, touch sensitive, they're capacitive sensitive, so you're not actually or at least it doesn't feel like you're pushing much and must pick up the capacitance in your finger. And there's a very satisfying click with every push that you make. So I wish they'd kept that in later years. It's almost like an iPhone, a keyboard on an iPhone when it gives you uh, that auditory feedback. Um, the other thing about it is it's got a very small display, just showing the track and the digits. These were super expensive fluorescent displays in the time, so they kept them very simple. Subsequent models would have shown you the number of tracks and where you were. Um, so pretty simple. The only uh, knob on the whole unit is for the volume control on the headphones uh, situated here. It's got a neat power switch with an LED just below it. And not much else. There's a reset, uh, the ability to repeat uh, one or all the tracks. Here's the sensor for the remote control, fast forward, rewind. So this is all pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, a couple other interesting features. Let's look at the back it this way. Outboard power supply, this allowed them to um, kind of keep the cases sort of small and tight. This is a pretty small form factor, probably about two inches less in width than your average CD player. Power supply transformer on the outside along with the heat sinks for the electronics that go with the power supply. Um, a switched outlet, which is uh, probably the only CD player I've ever seen with a switched outlet. And on this side, there are a couple of things that are neat. This accessory connector, I guess Sony had some big plans that they were gonna do something with that and it never really materialized. So this is sort of a legacy useless connector. A line output as we know, an anti-shock. That's pretty interesting. I have no idea what it does. Obviously the name sort of indicates it, but I don't know what it does electronically. And the auto pause. 
which is also very unusual for a CD player. Here we see the label for August 1983, uh, manufactured in Japan. So this is the, the cool thing about these units. This is before it all kind of went uh, to the Chinese market. So um, made in Tokyo, Japan. Let's see, the other thing that's disappointing is that the case is plastic. Um, you know, both the faceplate and the top of the case is uh, sort of this shiny plastic. And, uh, you know, unlike subsequent CD players like the Sony ESD 707, or sorry, CDP 707 ESD, a couple of years newer than this, and that is a tour de force made out of copper, heavy metal everywhere, uh, the highest quality parts. Um, so subsequent CD players to this actually were pretty neat um, and, and a lot better before once again they got deteriorated into you know the mass market you know so in the, in the 90s they finally all went to sort of cheaper versions of, of the cdp 707. Uh, the remote is a boxy remote similar to what would have come with the sony television over that era i think they share the same chassis with all the basic functions on there not much else to it so here it is let me see if i can crank it for you See, look at that, that's almost uh, just two clicks on there. It's James Bond's soundtrack, as you can hear. So pretty fast access between tracks. Also typical of early Sony CD players. Another thing I just noticed is there's no stop button. <laughs> there's a pause button, but nothing to stop it. A secondary push to the pause just unpauses it, so that's kind of unusual. Um, and an open close. That delay that you see in the drawer opening is essentially the clamping system having to release. So that third motor that we talked about that releases the clamp has to actuate and go through its motions of releasing the disc before the drawer can eject. Only seen on this sort of CD player. I've never seen such a delay between the open and the actual drawer opening. So you've gotta be patient with this one. So that's it, that's all I got for you. Um, Sony CDP 101, brought to you from SkyFi Audio. Please subscribe to our channel and let us know uh, what you think. Thanks for watching.